Let the church say amen. 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 There's room at the cross for you. 1 Corinthians 1 18 tells us preaching of the cross is foolishness to those who do not believe. But it is the power of God for those of us who do believe. So there's still room at the cross for you. But you need to get in a hurry while the blood is still running warm through your veins. Because once the blood stops flowing and you have not gotten your house in order, there will be no room at the cross for you. This is another day that the Lord has made. And regardless of what is going on in this divided world, and these divided, these divided states of America, this divided state of Georgia, what is going on in your home, or even what is going on in your body, just remember this, that God is still in control. God know all, he see all, and he hear all. What we need to do, we need to learn to cry to the Lord while there is time. Those of you who have your Bible, first let us go before the throne of grace. Our Heavenly Father is once more again that we are few thy believing children. We have come to present ourselves unto you. Lord, look upon us with the eye of compassion. Search us thoroughly. If there's anything that is like sin, anything that is like iniquity, Lord, we pray that you would move it as far as the east is from the west. We pray, Lord, that you will bless us spiritually, mentally, as well as physically. And Lord, look down upon those who are sick, shut in, and bereaved. Those who are behind prison walls and those who are prison bound. Have mercy, as only you can do. Lord, we pray that you will strengthen us for we are weak. Fill us up. We have been torn down. Give us a mind to seek you while you may be found. To call up on your name while you are near. Because the time is coming when we're going to have a desire to call up on your name. But you will not answer. So while the blood is still running warm throughout, we pray that you would have mercy upon each of us. Amen. Allow me to get this out of the way and then we'll go to our scripture for today. First Corinthians, the first chapter. Verses 23 through 30. For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. 
And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord there till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly amongst you, and many sleep. Amen. 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 To the word of God. Now, those of you who have your Bible, come and go with me to the Psalms. Psalms 25. And I'm going to only read into your hearing one verse of Scripture. Psalms 25 and 7. 25 and 7. Psalms 25, verse 7. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. According to thy mercy, remember thy me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. A thought for you to hold on to today is unrepentant sin. Unrepentant sin. When David penned Psalms 25 and 7, David, as you know, was a man after God own heart. Amen. He was talking about sin. Something that need to be dealt with on a daily basis. Right. Don't let sin go unnoticed from day to day. Sin is lawlessness. Trans Transgressions of God's will by omitting to do what God's law requires of us and by doing what it forbids. We trust past against God's law, sometimes even unknowingly that we are trespassing against God's law. Amen. David is not necessarily talking about little kids. Although we need to understand that each of us, as David said, we were shaping and iniquity. That's shaping in wickedness. Amen. And we was born into a world 
of sin. Amen. We are all sinners. And the things that we do today, when you become of age, you can see a lot of errors that are being made in our society. I once saw a little baby in his mother arm just smacked her and slapped her glasses off her eyes. And she said, he's just playing. Playing today. Gonna be sorrow tomorrow. Children come into this world sinners. I don't care how cute a child might be. That is a cute bundle of sin. And you need to start dealing with a child as soon as that child come into the world. They understand. My oldest child, I once took him to a baby cell. And she took the baby and just went over there and laid him down. And I'm standing there waiting for her to go over there and take up my baby and cover him. She said, uh, do you want anything else? <laughs> and I pointed out the baby. She said, oh, he's going to be all right. Teaching me that that child would only cry for a certain amount of time. You know, crying is a hard thing. You get tired crying. <laughs> Notice a child when he is crying, when he starts getting tired, he's going to start uh, uh, hiccuping. He's tired, and before you know it, he's gone to sleep. We are doing things out of the way that God told us to do. God says, train up a child in the way he should go. Proverbs 13 and 14 says, He who spares the rock hates his son. Do you think that's cute? To hate your son? But listen to what he says. He who loves him is careful. Listen to that word. Put a pen in that word. Careful to discipline him. Not to go in there and injure that child in any kind of way. But you go in there and let that child know that you've been there. He gonna remember when you chastise him. It's just like don't let a child touch a red hot stove. But let a child touch a, a semi-hot stove. And he'll never do it again. If he come near that stove again, the first thing you're going to holler out, hot! Hot! He has learned the lesson. David said he was, David said he was shaping an iniquity. And born in the world of sin. Job says in 14 and 4, who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean thing? Not one. When you were born into a world of sin, how can it be clean? What can make my spirit clean? Nothing but the blood. Paul fought 
clarify in Romans 3.23. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There is none good, not one. Jesus told them time and time again. Jesus told Nicodemus, who came to him by night, you must be born again. You must be born again. I must be born again. Jesus said to the scribes and the Pharisees who caught the woman in the very act of committing adultery. Jesus said to the ones that brought her to him as he stooped down and wrote something on the ground. He said unto them, He that is without sin, let him cast the first stone. Jesus went to the religious leaders. He called them a bunch of hypocrites. He said, first, what you got to do, you need to remove the plate from your eye oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. before you can see the speck in your brother. Amen. Don't always be fault finding. Don't always think that everybody is wrong and you are the only one that is right. Amen. When the Bible tells us that there is none good, none of us. When we see someone doing wrong or sinning, we need to look back over our life. We need to do like Paul said. Listen to what Paul said. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Look back over your childhood and see, can you find any sin that have not been repented of? You know that time that you told your mama you were going there <laughs> and you went over young. <laughs> you remember that time when daddy and mama were sleeping, you eased up that window and sneaked out that window. <laughs> you know that time that you told your mama that you was going to be with her and you went to be with him? <laughs> Have those sins been repented of? You are not little white, the same as I'm not little white. Oh, if the Lord had called me when I was still in the world, I know where I will spend eternity. No doubt in my mind. The writer of Hebrews tells us, for though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you. Again, the first principles of the articles of Christ and you have come to need milk and not solid food. Yes. A lot of us, we are not even strong Christians. 
we are still babes in the Lord. We are babes because I said that because if the preacher tell you right now to turn to Habakkuk, somebody going to have to go to the end day. You have not been practicing your soul. You have not been practicing God's word. For everyone who partake only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness. For he is a baby. Still a baby. You've heard time and time again. Nothing that happened to you in this world cannot be found in these 66 books that God has given us. But solid food belongs to those who are full of full age. That is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern between good and evil. Okay. You got to exercise your mind. You out there walking and running and going to the gym, exercising your body, don't you know your body is going back from where it came? You need to exercise your mind so you can know what does says the Lord. My supervisor knew that I like the word of God. So one day he brought me a tape. He said, Zeke, said, I was thinking about you, and uh, I brought this cassette for you. He said, you might get some good out of it. And I got a whole bunch of goodness out of it. It was the five blind boys of Mississippi. <laughs> and one song that had been written on the tablet of my heart from the time I heard it up until this day. The five blind boy was physically blind. But spiritually they could see better than all of us together. I heard this song. It said, it won't be nobody fault but mine. I said, it won't be nobody fault but mine. If I should die and my soul get lost, he said, it ain't going to be nobody fault but mine. And if your soul, and if you should die and your soul be lost, it ain't going to be nobody fault but you. No one can make you study your Bible. No one can make you go to Bible study. No one can make you go to Sunday school. No one can even make you go to church. But there is one thing I can tell you. You got to give an account at the judgment one day. And this is a trip that you're going to have to make all by your loss. Daddy can't go with you. Mama, sister, or brother. You're going to go through those eternal doors and stand before a holy and a righteous God all by yourself. Amen. You need to understand the halls of death. On this side of the halls of death where we are today, 
There is mercy and grace. There is forgiveness of sin. But when you stand before a holy God, you ain't going to say nothing. You're going to receive the punishment that you deserve. And it will be righteous. If I was you, this is what I would do. I would hold fast to 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show yourself approved unto God. So you can become a workman that need not be ashamed. Because you know how to divide. The word of truth. Amen. God has given us all we need mm -hmm. to make it to the promised land. Amen. He would not be God mm -hmm. if he expected us mm -hmm. to be at point B mm -hmm. and had not given us direction. How to get right. far. If you are not sure about your soul salvation, God has already given us what we need. In Isaiah 1.18, Come now and let us reason together. Jesus is telling you, come on and let's talk about this situation. Let's pray about this situation. Although your sin are as scarlet, I can make them whiter than snow. Amen. Though they be red like crimson, I can make them whiter than wool. Yeah. A lot of us have not seen wool when it is clean. He used snow and he used wool. Mm -hmm. All right. mm -hmm. Two things that are very white. Mm -hmm. And he's telling you, though your sin, mm -hmm. scarlet and crimson is a deep, deep, deep red. Mm -hmm. And if you are that stained, mm -hmm. no detergent or bleach in the world mm -hmm. can clean that. They are, you, you will be stained for all your life. God, when you have a talk with Jesus, the songs are let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our cook. The songs are all oh, what needless pains we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. God want to have a talk with you. Let us reason together. If you got a problem with God, tell it to God. When you put God business in the street, mm -hmm. you're gossiping. Okay. Very right. When you tell people about the goodness of God, you're telling them the gospel. Mm -hmm. 
And don't get those two words mixed up. Gossiping and gossip. And the gospel. No, that there's nothing too hard for God to do. First John 3 and 20 tells us that even if your heart condemn you, God is greater than your heart. You know those things that we did when we was children? People say they are the unforgivable sin. That lets you know that they don't know what they're talking about because all sins are forgivable, forgivable except the sin of blasphemy. Know what you are talking about when you are talking about the word of God. God is such a good God. Listen to the Psalm, I mean, 1 John 1 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. He will not only forgive us our sins, but He will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now listen to this and see, does it make any sense to you? God going to forgive your sin, and he's going to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Have not you heard the saying that everybody got a skeleton closet? Who have not heard that? You just heard it from me. But I said that's the biggest lie that ever been told. Those who have not been, let me tell you what a, a skeleton closet is a closet full of all kind of sin, adultery, murder, and lying, cheating, backstabbing. That closet is full to the door. That's what is a skeleton closet because those skeleton closets are still in there. Yeah. But the God that we serve, yeah. he will come to you. Yeah. He will clean out that skeleton closet. Yeah. He will sanitize that yeah. skeleton closet. Yeah. Then you know what God will do? God will Convert that skeleton closet into a prayer closet. Go to your prayer closet and thank God for all the many acts of kindness that he has committed against you. If you turn all your troubles, your heartaches, and your pain over to Jesus. He's going to take care of that skeleton closet. <laughs> Psalms 6 and 4 says, Turn, O Lord, and deliver me. Save me because of your unfailing love. God would never let us stand. You have not gone so far that the long arm of mercy of our Lord cannot reach out and bring you to this fold again. Biblical faith isn't just a feeling. Neither is it an attitude or simply or insignia on your t-shirt or hat or a tattoo 
on your body. Mm -hmm. That's not biblical faith. It is more than a saying you post on social media. Half the time, what we write or what we put on social media, you put it on there because it sounds good to you. You don't practice it. It just sounds so good. And you think that if you put it on there, that gonna make you look good. That gonna make you be a big time Christian in the house of the Lord. But the saddest thing about it, usually the one that write it on social media don't even come to the house of the Lord. Don't you be stiff naked as your fathers were. But yield yourself unto the Lord. And enter into his sanctuary, which he has sanctified forever. And serve the Lord your God, that the fierceness of his wrath may turn away from you. The Bible says there's going to come a time when they're going to be running, calling the mountain to fall on us. Oh, yeah. Trying to hide from the one that is seated on the throne. Yeah. David said, Psalms 122, one, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. My brothers and my sisters, in times like these, we need the Lord to help us. In times like these, we need to have Ark of safety. And when we get to that ark of safety, you will never go home because he'll give you food when you are there. You'll never be thirsty because he'll give you water when you're thirsty. The song said, Come to Jesus. Don't wait too late. Don't let those unforgiven sins stay on your book because sin can only be blotted out by the heavenly Amen. You can't undo the sins that you have done. But I know a man who can undo all those low down and dirty sins we have done. A lot of us have fathers and we have mothers that have already gone to be with the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. And if they was here today, there is something that we would want to tell them. Because they passed on before you grew in the Lord. Or you could go to them and say, Dad, I was wrong. Mama, I was wrong. Yeah. You can't do it now. But oh, what peace we often form. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because 
We do not carry everything to God in prayer. You can't carry it to dad and you can't carry it to mama. But you can carry it to the Lord in prayer. God have cleared out that skeleton closet and made it a prayer closet. Go to your prayer closet and tell Jesus all about your trial and your tribulation. Come to Jesus. Come to
And then the one being overlooked by the cup of the bread. The scriptures have been read. The prayer has been prayed. Now, the bread represents Jesus' body, which was broken for us. He says, often as you eat of this bread, you do show forth his death. So you may eat at this time. When they had finished supper, he said, the cup represents the New Testament in my blood. He said, I would not drink it with you until I drank it with you anew in my Father's kingdom. But as often as you drink of it, do it in remembrance of me. You may drink. And I pray. The Lord's richest blessings upon you. And I pray that he will be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. As we prepare to dismiss, 